Good morning, I'm Coach Erin. I'm a breathing coach, a yoga teacher, a physiologist, and I help people breathe well, live well, and speak well helping leaders become more mindful, helping you become more connected in your life. So I get to walk with you in this journey. I am a virtual coach and I work privately with my clients. This is what I want to teach you today. None of that matters right now. What I wanna teach you today is ways that you can see your baseline of breathing. So what I mean by that is, are you breathing in a pattern that is causing more stress in the body? Are you slipping into over breathing? I have three tests for you to let you know if your breathing is potentially falling into that dysfunctional category or what we call breathing pattern disorder. So if you have some disordered breathing, there's a lot of consequences in your mind and body that can come from that. Because if you think of it like this, your breath is supposed to be that thing that modulates the nervous system. And when we talk about nervous system, there's the sympathetic fight or flight nervous system state, and there's the parasympathetic rest and digest, just to kind of make it simple, let's look at those two. So there's sympathetic fight or flight or freeze, and then there's parasympathetic nervous system state, rest, digest, restore, and cover, recover. You should be able to flow in and out, in and out of those throughout the day if your nervous system is healthy. But sometimes, whether it's by an injury, trauma, loss, grief can change, really change the breathing pattern that I've seen. Um, any type of extreme emotion usually, or just very challenging season in your life, potentially even from childhood, if you had a very hard upbringing and a lot of pain and trauma and dysfunction there, you might have been carrying these breathing patterns with you for a very long time. So be gentle. We want to look at the root cause because usually if we're breathing in a dysfunctional pattern, there's some kind of dysfunction somewhere else, usually mentally. So I always like to pair and re refer my clients to a really good mental health counselor, especially if they're dealing with some kind of trauma. Okay, so now we know the whole body and the breath and the mind, they're all connected. You know, I once had a doctor who I was seeing, I've had back surgery before, and when I was postpartum after our second child, I had pelvic organ prolapse, like all these issues going on in my pelvic floor. I was definitely breathing wrong. And I was also having all this back pain and I was at an orthopedic surgeon's office meeting with the physician's assistant. And she said to me, oh no, your, your low back issues aren't because of your pelvic floor. They're not connected. And I was like, thank you for your input. <laughs> I'm leaving, you're wrong. And I, as a wellness coach, as a physiologist, being in this field of health for over 17 years, I just couldn't even believe that that mentality still exists where we think that we're not connected. We are so connected. And your breath is that tool for you to really co connect with what's going on inside. I think of it as the highway between the mind and the body. It's so interconnected. If your breathing changes, you're gonna have more tension at, at, at very least in the body. Because if you start sucking in on the inhale, like so many people are vertical breathing, and you're sucking in on that inhale, guess what? Your back's tightening, your pelvic floor's tightening, your stomach's tightening, your shoulders are activating every time you breathe. How many times do you breathe throughout the day? Well, we're gonna kind of look at that this morning, but between 20 and 25,000 or more, if you're really stressed, times a day, you're doing it all the time. It matters. It matters when we're talking about your health. It's gonna be that, especially if you're dealing with chronic pain, it's gonna be one of the things you want to work on to support balance in the body, bringing you back to a normal homeostasis, not getting you stuck in chronic fatigue, chronic stress. We want to use our breath as that inside out tool to manage stress in the body, to send that signal that it's okay. 
all is well. And our breathing, if we're breathing in a pattern too fast, too short, too shallow, irregular, that's sending the signal that we are not okay. Things are not right. All right, so it's the input. And our breath, you can change. It's a part of the autonomic nervous system, but it is also voluntary. You can have it under voluntary control. And that's what breath work is, where we're consciously taking some time to breathe in certain patterns and techniques that usually for most people are going to decrease stress and anxiety. So that is a long intro. Thank you for staying with me. If you did, it sounds like you're interested. So now you get to get to the good stuff for having a decent attention span, which nobody has anymore. We're starting with our breathing rate test.